Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Anstey, and it's an honour and a pleasure to introduce Stand Up to Stop Suicide, the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please give a big warm welcome to one of Calm's patrons, David Badil! Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not really here to do any jokes. I'm here as a patron of uh, Calm, which for those of you who still don't know, is a charity uh, which is about the, trying to raise awareness of the problems faced by young men. And you might think that's a bit of an odd thing for me to be a patron of, but I, have, I faced a lot of problems when I was younger. I was, I was beaten up twice in my life when I was young. Uh, once for being Jewish, uh, once for being a Pakistani. <laughs> Absolutely true. I actually said to the people who were beating me up for being a Pakistani, you don't understand, I'm Jewish. But it, it was no good. Ladies, you should never underestimate a man's ability to be completely fucking vacant. Honestly. <laughs> we're Zen masters. We can go from one end of the day to the other and maybe think, me balls are a bit itchy today. Seriously. <laughs> At Waterloo, they gave this announcement out on the station. It said, there are beggars on this station. You're advised not to give them any money. I thought, how'd they like it if they had beggars running up and down the platform shouting, there's fuck all chance of a train. You're advised not to buy a ticket. <laughs> Worst place is a mainline station to give beggars money, because you give it to them, they say, oh, can I have money for a cup of tea? And you give them like 50p or something, and they go off and try and buy a cup of tea at Upper Crust. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dearest place in the world to buy a cup of tea. You're thinking, fuck me, mate, that's my money you're wasting there. <laughs> Shop around, you've got all day. I'll try and make it easier. How many people here have ever stood on a station platform and looked at the person in front of them and just gone, fuck it, I'm going to shove them in front of the train? <laughs> See, that's generally what I find is there's more psychos than dancers in the world. Suicide is one of the biggest killers of young men in the UK. And Ground Force was on TV. I, I became entranced. It was the one with Nelson Mandela in it. He's a... Oh, it's a very moving story of a man's struggle against apartheid and then his garden slightly improving. <laughs> I am a Hindu. Anyone remember us? The joke religion, flying monkeys, women with eleven arms. No one takes us seriously anymore. Everyone else has got something to fight for. The Muslims, they got Palestine. The Jews, they've got Palestine. <laughs> The Sikhs, they got England cricket selectors' obsession that left arm spinners have to be able to bat a bit. What have we got? You try going out there waging war against the West and they're Ganesh, the elephant god, people just piss themselves laughing. But it can't just be the religion thing. Because despite the fact I'm from the more liberal of religions, being gay is still seen as the ultimate taboo, a status just below a leper and just above somebody that doesn't really understand cricket. <laughs> For every life lost through ecstasy, 88 young men take their own life. Just a hint, the best excuse if you want the day off, you just phone in and say, oh, sorry, I can't come in today. I've got terrible friction burns on my genitals. Because <laughs> they won't ask you anything else. <laughs> just get this flustered person on the other end of the phone going, come in when you can, that's fine, I'll just write flu on the form, shall I? <laughs> We try and do things to keep the romance going, and if you're a bloke, apparently, that's your job. And if you're a woman, your job is to tell us if we've done our job. That's the division of labour vis-a-vis keeping the romance going in a relationship. <laughs> I've actually had that. I've been stood there going, I'm sorry, honey, I'm not romantic enough. Is that what you're telling me as you stand there in my dressing gown, brushing your teeth? We're not even in the fucking bathroom. <laughs> You've got foam and gum bleed running down. You look like a rabid dog in a coat. And you're telling me I'm not... Well, I guess I need to lift my game, huh? Stand up to stop suicide. You know when you're just stuck to someone who's got this kind of... who is creating tinnitus in your head, and, and there's this person who just spent every sentence ended with, do you know what I mean? 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 
you ever find that people who use the phrase, do you know what I mean, are the people least likely to ever say a sentence which is so philosophically or scientifically bamboozling that the final words are required? <laughs> I was leaning against this wall, right, sicking up my chips, and this bloke was trying to feel my tits. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, mo most of the, the required facts were there. I've got a rough, rough picture, but tell me more of this wall. <laughs> and no, I'm only kidding. I'm a big fan of the monot monogamous relationship. I, I think maybe when you're about 18 or 19, you think it's a good idea to go out and sleep with loads of different people. I think you get a bit older, into your 20s, you realise it's more satisfying to be in a long-term exclusive relationship with something you have genuine feelings for that you cherish and love. <laughs> then you get a bit older, uh, into your 30s, and you realise, no, no, I was right first of all, but uh, <laughs> it's too late, you've got kids now, I'd be embarrassing to tell them. You'd have to divide up the CD collection. More trouble than it's worth. Best just sit it out, wait for the blessed release of death. Uh... <laughs> so, folks, remember, being silent isn't being strong, and here's Paul Sinner. One Friday, July 2005, the Manchester Evening News publishes a photo of my face underneath the headline, The Only Gay Bengali Doctor in the Village. I'm starting to feel a little bit paranoid. My dad rings me up and says, we need to chat. I go on the Monday and he sits me down and he hits me with a bombshell. Your mum tells me there's something about your life you haven't told me yet. Shit. And I sat there and I racked my brain thinking what story could fill this gap. And I realised that I was going to have to come out to my dad. He just smiled and went, big deal, no one gives a shit about that anymore. How weird was that? <laughs> the hundred to one outsider. Not the thousand to one rank outsider, which would have been my dad saying to me, you're gay, don't tell your mum, but I'm a little bit curious myself. But it was definitely the hundred to one second outsider. Boy, did I not see this one coming. My dad has never been a liberal. Like a lot of dads in the 80s, he'd bring dinner parties to their knees with his appalling views on a woman's responsibility during rape. <laughs> The biggest killer of men between the ages of 15 and 35 is, in fact, suicide. Well, folks, there's a lot of problems in the world, but it's OK, because wristbands are sorting them all out. <laughs> Those ribbons didn't know what they were doing, did they? They were fucking useless. <laughs> wristbands on the case. <laughs> My favourite wristband would have to be the anti-bullying wristband. Take a look at me. I'm not a man in favour of bullying. But the anti-bullying wristband made me laugh because it became so popular, because the footballers like Wayne Rooney and David Beckham wearing it Kids were getting beaten up at school for their anti-bullying wristbands, and that's fucking beautiful, come on. <laughs> you feel bad for the kid getting bullied, but you kind of have to hand it to the bully for cutting through the bullshit on an issue, don't you? <laughs> I'm so glad that never happened to me when I was at school, because I could imagine myself trying to reason with the bully as he beat me up for my anti-bullying wristband. That was the kind of prick I was at school. <laughs> I could see myself going, what are you doing? That's an anti-bully. You realise that's an anti-bully. Oh, the irony. Boom. 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 You're only fooling yourself, you know. Boom. You may take my wristband, but your actions will never mirror the sentiments it represents. If you would like to get involved with the campaign against living miserably, or perhaps you'd like to find out about our next event, please go to our website, www.thecalmzone.net. I'll see you soon. Isn't there some strap line you're supposed to do? Oh yeah, being silent isn't being strong. Well don't do it like that, do it sensibly. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Okay, ready? Go. <laughs> yeah. Being silent isn't being well, strong. Well don't do it in a... In no. a, in a, in a, in a <laughs> now you're doing it in an earnest voice. Well, I'm not doing it earnestly. Voice over. Yeah, but don't change your voice to do <laughs> That's it. That's the only way to say it. it as you would say it if you were perhaps oh, talking now. to a friend in the street. How am I supposed to be not self-conscious with talk, all that pressure Just on say it as you would if, say, if someone came up to you in the street. Alright, okay. Well, I wouldn't say that sort of thing. What? No, but let's say you did. Mental. Let's say you did. They'd be saying, what do you mean? How's your wife? You wouldn't be saying, <laughs> what are you saying that let's for? Say you, let's just say okay. you have to say this to someone in the street. Being silent isn't being strong. I think that was gabbled. I don't, I don't <laughs> think I'd have that. If yeah. I was already on the edge, would you say I wouldn't it? have been paying attention How would you fully. say it? I mean, if you said it, but you're silly West okay, Country no, accent. Well, so it no, would, take it seriously. Well, yeah, it would, but it'd be something like this. Being silent isn't being strong. No, that was Ernest. Yeah, but That's Ernest is good. Ernest you said is Ernest wasn't good. No, I'm, saying, I'm not saying fake <laughs> Ernest is no good. Uh, right, really but you could have done it like that. <laughs> being silent. Being strong. Like, we all know you don't speak like that. You've got that kind of slightly whiny voice. <laughs> being silent isn't being strong. Good. <laughs>